How's it going everybody? Welcome to Soul Carney and today I'm going to be talking about some of my favorite and least favorite universal horror movies. Let's get into it. Life! Life, do you hear me? In my creation! Universal Studios has been making movies since movies were being made. In the 30s and 40s, they had a golden era of horror, and this is where we get movies like Dracula and Frankenstein that are just so classic, and the name Universal transcends just the studio name. The Universal picture that people get in their heads whenever they see Dracula or Frankenstein usually comes from one of these two movies. And Dracula, as we know him, as played by Bela, Bela Lugosi, really is only in one movie. He's technically in a couple of comedies later on in the 40s. However, um, as far as just standalone Dracula movies, he's only in one, and that is 1931's Dracula. This was directed by Todd Browning, and it's just... I'm gonna get crucified for saying this. It's not that good. It's, um, Bela Lugosi's performance is fine, it's good. Everything else is bad. Every other acting performance, other than Renfield, is pretty bad. And the story is just a snoozer all around. It was actually based on a stage play, which was based on the book, rather than being based directly from the book. So that makes a lot of sense whenever we've got big changes, like Renfield going up to Castle Dracula, and Jonathan Harker never you know, really meeting Dracula in the way he does in the novel. And generally speaking, if it tells an interesting story, I don't really care if it differs from the book too much. But this is one of those examples of it differed too much, and the story is just too not exciting for me to really justify it. It's just, it's a classic movie, so you have to respect it for that, and there's something about it that makes me want to keep watching it, but I overall I just don't enjoy this movie. It starts off when Renfield goes to Castle Dracula, and meets Dracula, and then he meets his brides. Basically, he goes crazy from that and becomes Dracula's servant. And this is used to explain what is apparent in every rendition of the Renfield character, that he's kind of crazy and under the control of Dracula, but this is just explaining it away by using him in the first scene, rather than Jonathan Harker as the story was originally written. From there, it's basically a lot of people talking about things that are scary. And I was always just thinking, why don't we just see that? A red mist spread over the lawn, coming on like a flame of fire. And then he parted it. And I could see that there were thousands of rats with their eyes blazing red, like his, only smaller. And then he held up his hand, and they all stopped. And I thought he seemed to be saying, Rats, 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 thousands, millions of them, all red blood. All these will I give you. If you will obey me. Like, that sounds so scary. Why can't we just see that? But we don't get to see a whole lot of things that are scary. Dracula's death is off screen. Almost every death is off screen. There's not too many legitimately terrifying moments in it. There was not one point where I was just creeped out or disturbed or anything like that. So, overall, I really don't like this movie. I don't think it's a good film. I think there's one good performance in it. And that's about it. I might get crucified for that because that's a classic and, you know, you can't touch classics, but I just did and I slapped it in the face. Moving on to Frankenstein. Now, this movie was made that same year as Dracula and was supposed to star Bela Lugosi as well, but Lugosi was too good for that. He didn't want his face covered up in makeup because the monsters... Uh, he was set to play the monster. This is a decision he would later on regret and he would go on to play Drac uh, Frankenstein in one of the worst Frankenstein movies of all time. However, this is not that movie. 
This is Frankenstein, 1931, and this is one of the greatest films of all time. This movie has some stellar performances from Boris Karloff and from uh, Colin Clive, who plays Henry Frankenstein. This is a random change from the novel, because his name is Victor Frankenstein and his friend's name is Henry, but they just swap those two names around, because he has a friend named Victor in this movie. Certain plot elements from the story, from the book to this, uh, transfer over, but otherwise, that's about it. The story is completely different, but it tells a different story in a good way, and so I don't really care that it's different from the novel. This movie tells the story of Henry Frankenstein, who has locked himself away in his laboratory, which is this just this expressionistic, gothic masterpiece of a set. His family grows concerned, and they come and visit him at the exact wrong time, because uh, we see a lot of him robbing graves and gathering body parts for his monster that he likes wants to create. In a very classic scene, very well spoofed by Mel Brooks in Young Frankenstein, Fritz, his hunchbacked assistant, played by the same guy who played Renfield, goes into a college lab room and gets a brain that's on display and uh, he drops it because he gets scared of his own reflection, I believe. No, a skeleton falls down. Yeah, the, re the, the reflection thing is young Frankenstein. Anyway, he gets the brain, he drops it, uh, because like a prop skeleton fell down. It's like it doesn't really make sense, but it scares him and He uh, just grabs another brain and hurries out of there because he just made a mess He's made a bunch of noise and he gets the heck out of there and The brain was abnormal Abby who? Abby normal the brain of a murderer or a psychopath of some kind And so that's set to explain why the monster acts the way he does but it's not really elaborated on much further than that. So Frankenstein's family and friends all show up just in time to see him do this, create this abomination to God. And it's one of the most classic scenes of all time in any movie ever. It's been spoofed and parodied 300,000 times. The whole classic It's Alive scene, very extremely well acted by Colin Clive. So now the monster is created and they lock him away in this room where Fritz repeatedly tortures him. And uh, this brings us to one of the most disturbing scenes, in my opinion, in the entire movie. Because you've got this monster who's sort of just childlike brain, but he's a full-grown being. And he, he doesn't really understand the world at all, or why he's here, or anything like that. And Fritz, who is just kind of twisted little guy, physically, mentally, twisted man, he just wants to torture him, and he just tortures him, and he whips him, and he jabs at him with a, a torch, and he just gets this kind of sick pleasure out of torturing this helpless, innocent, at this point, monster. The monster has finally had enough with this, and he hangs Fritz. Uh, it's off screen, but then you, Henry Frankenstein runs in and sees Fritz hanging, and right at this point, his friend... Victor and his fiance Elizabeth show up, I believe, or it's his dad, one or the other. I believe it's his dad and his fiance show up, but I don't. It's been a minute since I've seen the film, so forgive me. But there's a lot of other stuff that happens. The doctor, who's was Frankenstein's tutor, comes in and he's been there the whole time, and they're they're going to kill the monster, destroy it, but the monster ends up killing the doctor before he can do that, and escapes. Henry decides to forget it, he's going to just have his wedding, and he apologizes to Elizabeth for ignoring her for so long. And this is kind of in line with the story. Henry kind of abandons the monster. And we then see the monster find this little girl, and he enjoys playing with this little girl. He's getting some kind of pleasure out of it, like as in he's like, he just feels happy and he feels like he belongs and he's, he's having fun. And they're throwing flowers into a pond and watching them float away. And viewing the girl as beautiful as the flower, the monster picks her up and throws her into the lake, approximately five feet away from the shore. But somehow she drowns. It was the 30s, they didn't have a lot of technical resources, so you're, well, I'm willing to forgive that kind of... It's such a clunky scene, in my opinion, and it's supposed to be one of the most classic moments, and it is. And it's supposed to be a horrific moment, but there's something just clunky about it that kind of makes me laugh. So, even though I said this is one of the greatest movies of all time, there's 
those moments where you're like, oh, this is a film from the 30s. But at that point, the monster runs away and you don't see him for a while. And the wedding is going on in town. This entire town is just alive and partying and having a good time. And that's when, I think, probably the second or first most, it's that scene with him, the monster and Fritz, or this scene right here. The father of the girl comes walking into town holding her limp, dead body and walking through town. And it's like an unbroken shot almost, not really, but I mean, it's just a shot of him walking through the town. And this, like, caught my attention. I was just kind of watching it on my phone, sitting there like this, like, mm-hmm. And then this scene happened, and I was blown away. Let me try turning this light on again. Oh, hey, there we go. My apologies. But anyway, the father comes walking through the city with his dead daughter, and the party just stops, um, slowly. There's, there's something kind of disturbing about the fact that everyone's partying, and people are still partying as he's coming through with his with his dead little girl and it's very sad and tragic and something again kind of disturbing about the element that people are still partying and not quite noticing him yet anyway there's this mob of people with torches and they go out into the woods and they search for the monster and henry is amongst them before the mob goes out the monster comes in and attacks elizabeth he doesn't kill her as he does in the book however he attacks her there's kind of a creepy scene where she's just sitting there waiting and the monster comes in the back window and stares at her and you can see him in the background and he creeps into the window and he hurts her or scares her or something it's not really said exactly what happens you hear her scream and she's fainted on the couch and the monster's leaving the, the room that's when the mob really gets fired up and then the mob goes out and searches for the monster who's run off into the woods so they're in these hills and these rocky areas and there's a scene from the book that is put in here but it, it it's done very differently. Henry meets his monster on top of a cliff. It's the first time he's seen the monster since he escaped the lab. And it's a very good scene and very beautifully shot, I would say. Uh, the imagery is very cool there. They get chased into a windmill. Henry chases the monster into this old windmill. And all the villagers and the mad mob are outside with their torches. And... There's some really cool shots between this spinning gear of Henry's face and the monster's face going back and forth. And it's a very cool shot. And then the monster takes Henry Frankenstein and throws him off the windmill. And he lands on one of the windmill sails and just folds. And it would have been an amazing death scene if they hadn't five seconds later, you know, pick him up. Oh, well, he's alive. And they run away because it was the 30s and they wanted to make sequels. And then the villagers burn the windmill down and there's this final incredible shot of the windmill burning down on the hill. And it's one of my favorite shots in any movie ever. We go from one epic movie to another stinker. The Bride of Frankenstein. I will again be crucified for this, but The Bride of Frankenstein I didn't enjoy. It was just kind of an inconsistent tone for a movie, I thought. It was too funny to be a horror movie and too scary not to be to be a comedy and just too goofy overall. I didn't care for the movie. There was one particular character that was just so annoying. That every time she was on screen, I was just couldn't wait for the monster to kill her. The monster comes out swinging in this movie. He kills two people almost immediately. And they're pretty brutal death scenes, I'll say that. I'll give it that. So I was a mid I was initially excited about this movie, and then literally five seconds later, this one character started talking, and I was like, if she's in the rest of this movie, this movie's going to be terrible. And she was in the rest of the movie, and the movie was terrible. I didn't like this movie. It adds more elements from the book, such as the blind man teaching him how to speak and things like that, but I don't know. It just wasn't a good movie. I didn't care for this movie at all. Now, I think something's wrong with y'all people because the best two movies from these universal horror classics are usually listed as Dracula and then number one being The Bride of Frankenstein and I'm like I must have missed it uh, maybe I should rewatch it but I don't want to I didn't like this movie I thought it was cheesy and just not good it had a cool death scene for the monster and The Bride is classic but it's just I only respect it for the classicness of it. I don't like this film. Alright, now we go from one stinker back to another gem. The Mummy. This film is incredible. 
It has one of the best opening scenes in any horror movie ever. It has an, an incredible acting performance by Boris Karloff. And it has some extremely brutal and creepy moments. Uh, the movie starts off, these archaeologists have their dig loot for the day, and they're categorizing all of it. What they've dug up, what they've found. And they found the mummy, and they found the scroll. They are super excited to get to that, but they're, you know, they're categorizing it in order or whatever. And there's this other guy who's kind of a local expert, and he's very superstitious, and he's like, we can't read this, I object to this. And he takes the other lead archaeologist out, and they have a conversation about the dangers of reading that scroll, and he's like, yeah, you're full of it. But inside, there's this younger archaeologist who's very gung-ho, and he's ready to to read this scroll and figure out what this mummy's about and everything like that. And that while he reads the scroll, the mummy, he recites the spell that brings the mummy back to life. The mummy very slowly wakes up, and then you just see his hand grabbing the scroll, and the archaeologist is frightened by the mummy initially, and then he goes crazy at the sight of seeing something that's been dead. At seeing such this horror, he goes crazy. And this is some. This is an element that was probably pretty popular at the time because of the works of H.P. Lovecraft were around, and H.P. Lovecraft works on madness a lot. People being driven mad by the horrors they've seen. And this is this scene does that beautifully, better than any other movie I've ever seen. He begins to laugh uncontrollably, and you find out later he laughed until he died. But just his laugh echoing throughout this scene is just so unsettling and creepy. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest of the movie, I will say, doesn't really hold up to this first scene. So there's that. But however, this movie is actually pretty creepy, and there's some pretty brutal moments. You see a guy get impaled. The story is classic. He's trying to resurrect his lover, Anoxinum. He finds out that she's reincarnated in this one lady who's probably the main girl of the story. And the movie's very good. I enjoy this movie. It's free on Tubi. I encourage you to watch it. Phenomenal film. That'll wrap it up for all the Universal Horror movies that I've seen and that I thought were worth talking about. I've seen some of the other ones. I just I found them to be bo more boring than they were worthwhile. And again, maybe I'm bad for that. Um, maybe I don't... Maybe I'm not getting it, but um, you know, old movies. There's just there's a charm to them, but at the same time, their original goals, be it comedy, or horror, or whatever, are usually outdated to this point where you're laughing at them for the wrong reasons or just things like that. But um, I believe Frankenstein is legitimately one of the best movies ever made, and The Mummy is also a very good horror movie. Uh, it still holds up and is kind of scary to this day, especially that first scene. Some other videos I'm wanting to make this month and send and post. One regarding two other um, kind of lesser known movies. One of them is Universal. One of them is just an independent film. And I want to talk about them because I think there's something interesting about both of these movies. And one of them is actually particularly still really creepy uh, for all that that I just said about old horror movies not really being scary anymore. One of them is legitimately very unsettling. And um, I would like to talk about that movie in depth on this channel. So if that sounds interesting to you, subscribe for that and you'll see it coming up hopefully within the next week or so. Um, other than that, I am so grateful to you guys that are still watching. Um, thank you so much. And I will see you next time.